Hello everybody, I'm Star After, and welcome to another episode of Recap of Thrones, the show where I break down every new Game of Thrones episode, providing a little bit of speculation. Getting into this episode, Season 6, Episode 7, The Broken Man. First off, this is a very spoiler-heavy show, so make sure you go ahead and watch the episode before you come back. You guys ready? Last warning. Holy crap, the Hound is alive. I figured he would be ever since I read about how they left it off in Book 3, Storm of Swords, and again, how they left it off on the TV series in, I believe, Season 4. So, with that being said, let's get into the rundown. Alright, so we start off, like I said, in the Riverlands. It looks like that's the kind of place they're in. Uh, with the Hound leading a peaceful life after the Battle of Brienne, he has been found by this man named Ray and is trying to live a very peaceful, uh, very peaceful life in this civilization. Next up, we go to King's Landing, where a lot has happened in this episode. We have Marjorie, who impresses the High Sparrow in her piousness, as well as the Sparrow also uh, bringing up that she hasn't been um, very, very good in bed with. The King Tommen, he's really pressuring her to create that heir for the dynasty of the Lannisters there. Next up, we also have Marjorie um, telling her grandmother, um, let's see, her name, Lady Elena, that she should go home back to the Reach. Um, and she also gives her a secret little note with nothing else but growing stronger, the sigil, the rose of House Tyrell. So all this whole time, it seems that Marjorie is playing the long game with the High Sparrow and she's going to come back. Next up, we have Cersei, who's trying to tell Lady Elena to stay in, in, in um, King's Landing. And of course, she is not really liking that too much. And Elena really gets back at Cersei. Um, and just basically says, no, I'm leaving, and, and, and basically Cersei, you, you lost at this point. Your brother's not here, your your king is not doing what, you, your son king is not doing what you want him to do, uh, just accept the loss. And next up in the north, we have Sansa, John, and Davos going to the Wildlings for help, going to the Mormons for help, and going to the Glovers for help, and just getting ready to go into battle and take back Winterfell. Next up, we have River Run, where Jeremy, uh, Jamie, as we know, has been disbanded from Kingsguard, so he is now leading the forces of the Lannister, who still have that allegiance with the Freys, and the Freys want to take back River Run, who was recently taken back uh, by the Blackfish, so Jamie and uh, Bronn, you know, lead that army in there and, and try to take over from what the Freys are doing, which is pretty pathetic. And they, he makes a parlay with Blackfish, who, who wants nothing but war. So we're going to see a very, very bloody, long-winded war coming to Game of Thrones, like usually in the last part of this season. Next up, we go to all the way to Valanis on the other side of the Narrow Sea. We have Yara, who is basically uh, staying over a night or two in Valanis as their journey with Theon continues on to Marines, so that is a very cool twist on the story. And finally, in Bravos, we have Arya, who is booking a ship. She's getting the heck out of Bravos because she's kind of been discovered that she didn't do her mission, and now it's going to end in her life being taken, so she's trying to get away. Unfortunately, things are not looking too good for her as the Waif uh, basically backstabs her, or from the front, but you know what I'm saying. So that is the state of Game of Thrones. Moving on to my strength of the episode. As mentioned before, the Hound is somehow alive after Bria of Tarth, um, and him had that epic duel in the hills, and he has been taken up by this man called Ray, and he's trying to basically show the Hound that there's a way not to use violence, and, and this guy Ray, he used to be a warrior just like the Hound, used to do just anything for money, and now he is, you know, just trying to live a pacifist kind of life. But as we see throughout this whole episode, um, basically all that, you can't do that in the world of Westeros in this age. There is always um, a hard lesson to be learned about those who 
are very, very uh, pacifist and not wanting to do any kind of violence. Uh, you got to use violence with violence, unfortunately, in this world. And, and the Hound learns the hard way as the whole village is massacred by the Brotherhood without banners, I think they are. Next up, it was really nice to see Bron and Jamie unite once again. They had that great little journey to Dorne. And, and again, their banter between the two of them is just hilarious. Where Jamie's promising Bron, you know, the beautiful woman to keep and all the gold he can get think of and it's just I love the banter between them and now that we see Braun who's actually giving orders to the phrase which is really hilarious so I'm happy to see Braun back in the picture because in the books he's been kind of gone since like book three I'm pretty sure so it's great that, that we see him in there Jerome Flint I love the actor next up the conversation with John Sansa and Davos with Lana Mormont was absolutely brilliant um, we see, first of all, the prowess of Davos in persuading others to join whatever cause he is supporting at the moment. And he does make an impression upon Lyanna Mormont, even though he is a nobody. And he is a knight that has a new family, as he likes to say to her. And then talking about Lyanna Mormont in general, she's only 10 years old. And she has all this responsibility to lead um, this smaller house on Bear Island. And that, to me, is just really indicative of the times. Again, there's so much violence. People are being killed left and right. The next in line is a little kid. Guess what? You don't have time to learn as a little kid in this day and age. You have to learn to grow up really freaking fast if you're in a position of power. Um, and it's kind of a direct opposite of Robin Aaron, really. I mean, if you look at them two, you just compare them. It's like, oh, wow, this kid was basically spoiled but this girl she grows up also the bear the Mormons are very warrior driven society and in the books the females actually fight with the men and are just as powerful as we see um, the men of man of arms of, of uh, the Mormons say that or her say that one of her men is worth 10 of theirs basically so they're very very skilled and finally and the last strength I have of this episode is the whole scene between Theon and Yara, um, you know, they're they're out of the Iron Isles, and they have gone really fast. Uh, it's, it's a wonder that time flies by in this series, because they somehow had sailed all the way around Westeros and ended up all the way over here in Volantis. So, yes, it's, and this was one of those scenes where it was a turning point. We have Theon in that environment. He is, he is very... <laughs> uncomfortable uh, is probably the word I would use because he's surrounded by all this tomfoolery and all these uh, you know sexual things going on uh, partying and everything else and he's just sitting there looking at his sister who's making out with the girl and she says look Theon you got a man up and I love the relationship between Yara and Theon it's very unique in that she actually like you know tough love is basically she keeps telling him drink that beer drink that beer that's gonna open up your mind and come back to me if you don't come back to me kill yourself and that's literally what she said just slit like slit your wrists now because you're you're gonna be worthless if you don't turn back into the old Theon and you know and at the end there we you see a glimpse of Theon. It's absolutely brilliant and like I said Theon's one of my favorite characters. This guy has one hell of an arc. So I cannot wait to see what's gonna happen with Theon and Yar going to Marine because this is different from the books as well. In the books there's another brother of Euron named Victorian and now he's the one in the books that's gonna go um, make the proposal to Daenerys. So Again, books are very, very different at this point than where the story in the show is, so it's anybody's guess what may happen, but all I know is that Daenerys needs a thousand ships, and the Greyjoys might just have what they need. So, that were my, those were my strengths of the episode. Let's get into my weaknesses of the episode. First off, um, I don't know what they were thinking of with the scene before the opening credits. Uh, unless you can comment in the comment section below, I don't know about any other episode where they opened up the scene before the opening credits. Um, to me, I, I don't think it was significant enough to have the Hound, like, appearing that way. 
Um, I would have liked, if they were going to do this for the first time, they should have done it with Jon Snow. Uh, I think they should have really done it with him. Uh, now it's like, are they going to be doing this all the time? So it's a little bit jarring because, you know, we're so used to seeing what's going to happen after the credits. I'm like, oh, wait, I can't, I have to sit back down because they have an, uh, a segment coming up. But anyway, so that's just a little nitpick there. Um, some bigger plot points, though, is first off, I'm really confused about this whole Brotherhood Without Banners massacring these innocent people that are traveling with the Hound. I mean, last we noticed, the Brotherhood Without Banners were fighting for the cause that, you know, Robert Baratheon back in Season 1 was doing. Like, they're fighting for the King. Now the King's been long gone. Why are they deciding to pick fights with these innocent unwarrior like people. It doesn't make sense unless one of these people noticed the Hound and they have this terrible plan where they want to kill everybody around the Hound to get him pissed off again to come back and, and try to duel Beric Dondarrion, the Lightning Lord again or something. Cause, um, but yeah, I, I want to see what's going on now with that whole thing. And, and finally, um, this episode could have used uh, an action sequence because this episode, while it's good, there was a lot of setup. Um, part of it, there's so much dialogue. They could have like used some parts to break it up with some action. I would have thought, but yes, that was uh, the episode. Uh, moving on to my quote of the episode, I have Tormund Giantsbane um, after the uh, after the Wildlings uh, decide to fight with Jon Snow. He says. To Jon Snow, we're not clever like you Southerners. When we say something, we do it. And I thought that was just hilarious because the the Westeros is full of deceptions and lies. The Westerosies, and, and it's just like, yeah, basically the Wildlings are just straight to the point. Like they say they're gonna do it, they're gonna do it. They're not gonna just backstab you and and, and just to say that, you know. So I really enjoy Tormund's just blunt reaction to certain things and. Yes, I love that character. So that was Season 6, Episode 7, titled The Broken Man. Like I just mentioned, this was more of a setup episode, but like everything is coming to that breaking point now. We have this huge war happening at River Run. We have, you know, the Iron Fleet that's going to make it to Marine. Um, the Hound is going to go ballistic on people. And it's just, and, and oh yeah, and Jon Snow and Davos and... Sansa are going to battle Winterfell, so this last, these last three episodes are going to be intense, guys. Um, so what did you think of this episode? Let's continue that discussion in the comment section below. Guys, you can look forward to my next episode on Monday, and thank you for watching Valor Magules. Did you enjoy this video? Then make sure you go ahead and hit that thumbs up symbol. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Subscribing to my channel will help me out and it helps you guys out keeping up to speed on all my latest content. Speaking of which, you can catch my weekly Star Wars show down over there. You can see a recent review I've done over there. And you can follow me on social media, Twitter, at StarRaptor, as well as Facebook.com slash StarRaptor.